Well, it got a little cold out here. <laughs> we're, uh, we didn't even mention where we were, I don't think. We're, so uh, Dan and I ended up being together out here uh, near Virgin, Utah, which, and we're about a, we're on BLM land that's about 20 minutes from the entrance to Zion National Park. So it's a fantastic location and it gets just a touch warm during the day, mm -hmm. not too bad. Nope, good uh, comfort. And then, um, uh, but at night it cools off wonderfully and it's uh, been amazing. So, mm -hmm. highly recommend it. If you do get out and boondock with your solar panels, you can come out here to, to BLM land near Virgin, Utah and have a good time. So, uh, all right, so we've talked about uh, the batteries. Mm -hmm. We've talked about solar panels. Now, what goes in between those two in order to make sure that the batteries are getting charged correctly? So it's what's called the charge controller. And the charge controller is able to harness the energy from the solar panels and charge the batteries. And um, there's two types of charge controllers. There's PWM, pulse width modulation. It's more the cheaper controller. You'll see it on any of the ground employees like kits that they sell. And for most people, you know, a small system, the PWM is okay. But if you're building any kind of system, that's going on your roof or anything like that, then an MPPT, which stands for multi-point power tracking, and basically it always adjusts to the maximum power that it can harness from the solar panels and put in the batteries. And the way an MPPT works is it's able to use a higher voltage, and that's where people are able to use the residential size panels that run sometimes 35, 40 volts or higher, and they're able to charge a 12 volt battery bank from it. Uh, a PWM, Anything over your charging voltage, your, let's say you're bringing in 17, 18 volts of charge, anything over that gets wasted. Um, it's only bringing in the amps it can at the charging voltage you need. And MPPT turns that higher voltage into more amps. So it may only be bringing in 20 amps, but it can output about 50 amps into okay. the batteries. So okay. it makes a nice difference. And then on cloudy days is where an MPPT controller shines because it constantly adjusts to the changing sun positions and the sun intensity. And it's always finding the maximum power that it can harness from the sun. Really? And then once you've got the power coming in, there's three stages to a battery charge. And this is the same for whether you're charging from an inverter or a charger or a converter or a charge controller. The bulk mode is the charging system is pumping as much juice as it can, as okay. much current as it can, and the voltage starts to come up on the batteries. And once it hits a preset absorption voltage, then the voltage stays steady and the amps start to taper off. And at the end of the absorption cycle is when your battery should be full and then you go into float and lead acid batteries and they need a float to hold them because they have a high internal resistance. Lithium doesn't technically need a float, but you generally have a float set just to hold them at a voltage until the sun goes down overnight. Okay. So. Okay.